Okay, it's a Wednesday here at the Palazzo Hotel in Las Vegas. Got in last night with my friend Bryce. We just settled in, got some all-you-can-eat sushi at Yama Sushi. Definitely recommend that spot. And did head over to the Venetian next door to play some poker. 3-5 no limit. And I intended to put in some hours and make a vlog. But shortly after I started playing and recording, I was told by floor staff to stop or else I'd be removed from the casino. So. I uh, had to cut that one short, only played about an hour, but I do have one interesting hand to share from that session. There was a $20 raise from the hijack. I called from the cutoff with Jack-10 offsuit, the button and big blind called as well. Four ways to a flop of ace, nine, eight rainbow. So I flop open-ended. Big blind led for 75 and had 146 back. The initial raise on the hijack puts in a raise to 175. And I've obviously got a gambling hand with eight clean outs and I'm in the mood to gamble. So I put in the 175, and my line of thinking was that hopefully the button would fold, and that if Big Blind does jam for his 221 total, it wasn't gonna be enough for it to reopen the action for the hijack to raise me off seeing a turn. So that was my thought process, and that is indeed what happened. The button folded, and the Big Blind went all in for 221. Hijack called, I called. The turn comes to 10, so now I pick up a pair, and my opponent and I are playing roughly 800 effective here, and he decides to bet 100 into a dry side pot, for that price, very reasonable to continue. I flick in the call, looking to bank the river, it comes a deuce. He continues the aggression for 100, I fold, he ends up tabling ace-king offsuit for top pair, top kicker, and it ends up being no good as Big Blind had 8-9 offsuit to take it down with two pair. So yeah, stuck 497 in poker to start the trip. Not ideal, but I am here till Friday, so plenty of time to bounce back and recover. Hope to start by doing that today. I'm gonna try to find a spot that's more vlogger friendly. Just a couple things before jumping into the hands. I'm gonna be in Tucson, Arizona from Tuesday the 24th to Saturday the 28th. It'll be my first time visiting, so if anyone has recommendations on food or poker, please let me know in the comments section. I also wanna continue expressing my appreciation for all of you tuning in, subbing, liking, commenting, and sharing, as well as picking up the gear. It's been really cool getting shirts, hoodies, and card protectors out to various states, and also internationally to Germany and New Zealand. Okay, first time playing at Resorts World, and first notable hand comes in six-handed play. Another gun raises to 15, hijack, cutoff, and small blind call. I'm in the big blind with pocket nines. Can play this hand for equity realization and just flat, or take a more capitalization slash aggressive approach and three bet. That's what I decide and I make it 100. The initial under the gun raiser folds, hijack folds, cutoff calls, and the small blind folds. Heads up to a flop of queen jack four with two hearts and a spade. Just gonna see bet range and I make it 100. Cut off doesn't think too long and calls. With that, I'm likely behind and will have to navigate accordingly. Turn comes the eight of hearts, giving me a gutter and a straight flush draw. And as long as I'm not against the flush, this is probably the best card on the deck to leverage and try to get him off a queen or jack. I bet 250 with 600 back. He doesn't think too long and lets it go. Six handed once again, this time with a button straddle. I raise a 35 from the hijack with jack 10 of spades. Cutoff puts in another raise to 110, folds back to me, I call. Heads up to a flop of 6-3 deuce with a couple of clubs and a heart. So complete whiff and prepare to just check fold, but my opponent checks back. Turn comes to 5 of clubs and it checks through once more. The river comes a 6 of spades and jack high is almost never good here. And given that my opponent has shown disinterest in the hand post flop, I put out a bet of 85. Just using a smaller sizing here to make it look like 7s through jacks or perhaps 4s that could play this way. He doesn't think too long and releases his hand. Next spot we we're playing eight handed and I raised a 20 from the hijack with pocket jacks. The button who started the hand with 500, three bets to 50. Small blind folds and the big blind puts in a four bet to 200. A somewhat tricky spot, if I call and button jams, I run the risk of big blind over jamming. And if I put in a five bet and get called, 
I'm unlikely to be ahead and would be up against Ace-King at best. Given these considerations, I decide to fold after which the button jams for 500 effective. Big line calls, and they go to a run out which comes ace high. Big line tables ace king offsuit to take it down, and if I had to guess, the button probably had pocket queens, so I get away cheap here. Shortly after, we are fully nine handed, and there's a $10 raise from early position that picks up three callers. I'm in the small line with ace seven of clubs, can absolutely get behind a three bet, but I decide to call instead. Big line calls as well, and we go five ways to a flop of ace nine deuce with a couple of suits, so I flop top pair, marginal kicker with a running nut club draw. Checks out the cutoff who bets 30, I call, and the hijack calls. Three ways to a turn of a nine of spades. Checks out the cutoff again, and this time he bets 70. Feels pretty close. I'm beating ace wheel hands and ahead of flush draws, but I could be edged out against ace eight, ace 10, and ace jack. My gut says to fold, but I put in the 70 instead. Hijack folds, and we go heads up to a river of a four of diamonds. Not good as now there are very few hands that I beat. I check and he knuckles back. I table, and it's no good as he shows ace-eight offsuit, and just like the Golden State Warriors season from a couple years ago, or pretty much every New York Knicks season, this was poorly played from start to finish. All right, seven-handed in this next one, and there's an under the gun race to 15. I three bet it to 50 from the hijack with ace-three of diamonds. Big blind and under the gun call, and we go three ways to a flop of seven-six-six rainbow. Checks to me, and I try to take this one down via a c-bet of 75, but I get the opposite of what I hoped for as both players call. We go to a turn of a 10 of clubs. Big blind checks, and now under the gun fires 125. Can't continue, and the big blind ends up jamming for a decent amount, which gets a fold from under the gun. Next spot, middle position raises to 20. I call from the low jack with 7-9 of hearts. The big blind calls as well. Three ways to a flop of 7-3 deuce with a diamond draw. Big blind checks, middle position C bets 40, I call, big blind folds. Heads up to a turn of a five of hearts. Middle position checks this time, and admittedly, not too sure where I'm at in the hand, I check it back. River comes, the jack of spades, he checks it again to me, and as mentioned on the turn, I'm a bit lost in the hand. I could bet, but my targets are kind of slim. It'd have to be pocket fours, pocket sixes, or ace five that can call. So I decided to just take my showdown and check, he tables, ace five of spades. So I do take this one down, but definitely don't love how I played it. The straddle is on in this next one, and the first couple players call the 10, and it gets to the player on my right in the hijack, who I'm gonna call a GTO wizard because he was watching range chart videos in between hands. He puts in a raise to 50. I've got eight nine of clubs in the cutoff, and I decide to mix in a three bet to 165. Small line thinks it through for quite a while and it ends up folding, the other players quickly fold back to the hijack, who puts in the call. We are playing roughly 1k effective and go heads up to a flop of queen send 7 rainbow. Solid flop to pick up open ended after 3 betting light, although the jack could be dirty. And I mentioned this also because of how 8-9 interacts on a board of queen jack 10 specifically, because you just gotta be mindful of ace king in these instances. Anyhow, when it checks to me, I'm gonna see bet this one, I make it 175. He doesn't think too long and folds his hand. This ended up working out not just because the hijack folded, but also because the small bond who tanked pre-flop and folded, he had pocket queens. Get lucky here. Quick spot in this next hand, there's a low jack race of 35, hijack and cutoff call, and I'm in the small blind with pocket jacks. With a couple of J's, I'm going to squeeze this one like a fresh cup of orange Julius, I make it 200. The initial raiser thinks it through for a bit, doesn't like it, and folds, and the other two players follow suit. Couple more hands to run through. There's a limb from under the gun one. Hijack makes a small race to 15. I just flat the button with 7-10 of diamonds. Under the gun one calls as well. And we go three ways to a flop of 10-9-6 rainbow. Action checks through. And the turn comes good giving me trips and putting up a backdoor spade draw. Under the gun one checks. And now hijack bets 30. I've played this hand somewhat strange thus far and why not keep the same trend? I race to 100 hoping to garner value from a variety of hands and draws. Under the gun one folds pretty quickly and hijack ends up doing the same. Last interesting hand, under the gun limps, low jack raises to 20, hijack calls, and I just flat from the big blind with ace 10 of clubs. Under the gun calls as well, and we go four ways to a flop of seven seven deuce rainbow. Checks to the hijack who bets a quarter, I call, the other two players fold. Turn comes a four of clubs, so I pick up the nut club draw, I check, 
and now my opponent fires 75. I consider a check raise, but 75 seems like a fair price, so I put in a call. Fifth streak comes, the 10 of hearts, so now I river solid value. I consider checking, but I think he's going to check back pocket fives through eights, and in an effort to target those hands for value, I bet 200. He doesn't think too long and puts in the call. I table, and it's no good as he shows king seven of spades for the flap three of a kind. Yeah, read that spot wrong completely. All right, just finished the session at Resorts World. Got good news and bad news. Bad news is that I booked a fourth loss in a row with this card protector in for a thousand, out for 856. So book a loss of 144. Good news though is my buddy Bryce did book a win. How much you win, buddy? About 900. Yeah, 900 for him. So that's going to be him paying for dinner tonight. And the other good piece of good news is that I met uh, Phil Galfon and Joey Ingram in the private gaming room. Uh, Phil Galfon's actually playing Brandon Adams for the Galfon Challenge. So really awesome meeting them. And yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this one. See you guys in the next video.